David Mamet is a highly influential American playwright with an idiosyncratic style, uh, and, but when you look at his plays, you can see a few threads that tie them all together, and we're going to look at five of those right now. Welcome to Derek Sings Poorly, the channel for theater kids of all ages and the people who tolerate them. I am the titular Derek, inviting you right now to like and subscribe to this video uh, before William H. Macy comes by and yells at you. Because life is so easy right now, I decided that I would take on the Dozen Daring Dramas Challenge. This is a playwriting initiative in which uh, a writer attempts to finish 12 scripts, uh, one each month, uh, set to a certain challenge. And you can actually follow my progress and read my work uh, down in my Patreon. I'll even have uh, chances for uh, people to uh, help influence decisions uh, in different plays moving forward. Uh, but this particular challenge that I'm talking about today involves emulating the style of a famous playwright, and uh, because I like a challenge, I chose uh, Mr. Mamet. And so I've been reading in a lot of his plays and watching a lot of performances, and here are five things that I've discovered that really make his work tick. And these are what I'm going to be trying to emulate uh, in my project, again, that you can follow in the Patreon. The first thing you notice is that a Mamet play really has a simple plot with complex incidents. It is uh, plot light and incident rich. What I mean by this is that uh, when you really break down a Mamet play, there's a very clear A to B path. It's generally a downward path, as we'll talk uh, in a moment here, but uh, so like Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Ross, is the plot is people want to sell real estate. Uh, Oleana, the plot is a uh, woman wants to blackmail her professor. Where Scream plays a wag the dog, the plot itself is simple. It is uh, they're producing a fake war. And so what you remember from, from a Mammoth production is not uh, plot points or twists, uh, but rather just the incidents along the way that tie into that central plot. It's a simple through line with little curves along the way. Right? A densely plotted play uh, has uh, lots of, of deep character interactions and subplots, twists and turns. You can sort of tell in a Mammoth play where it's going, uh, and it's just the cringe of wondering who's going to get hurt along the way. Because secondly, uh, in a Mammoth show, there aren't really happy endings. The main character is usually experiencing some sort of downfall, or even if he does come away unscathed, has to sacrifice uh, something, usually uh, morally or ethically, you know, lose something uh, of themselves. In the film state, main Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, technically gets to uh, have a, a somewhat happy ending, that is Mamet's uh, only straight comedy, uh, so he lightened up a little bit, Makes has to make a lot of concessions both morally and artistically uh, to uh, to get to the end of the film in one piece. But no character really escapes a Mammoth play uh, without some black mark on their soul in some way. The third hallmark of a Mammoth play is competition. Uh, it's really about the uh, striving for somebody to overcome uh, somebody else, usually through blackmail or coercion. Uh, he deals a lot with con men and with, uh, with sales people and uh, with people that have ulterior motives in their conversations. Uh, he's really interested at in exploring how people overcome one another and gain a leg up, again, usually at the expense of themselves. The fourth element of a Mammoth play is generally some sort of transgression. Uh, he has touched on sexual assault, on racism, crimes, and, and sexual proclivities, um, but they're not often deployed for, for shock value. Uh, it's more of that they simply are a part of the world that he's building. Uh, again, coming back to my first point that these aren't plot-heavy shows, but rather incident-heavy shows, uh, there simply are incidents of uh, transgressive elements that just sort of happen and then fade into the background. Uh, they don't serve as a huge a turning point as you would in a plot-heavy play. But the most distinctive element of a Mammoth production is obviously going to be the 
dialogue. Uh, and first thing you notice is that one is very profane. Uh, he is not one to shy away from, uh, from any curse word, especially one that can be used as a noun. Uh, but the real part of a mammoth dialogue that it makes it distinctive is the circular cyclical nature. Uh, the characters come back to the same phrases very, very often, uh, usually some sort of form of question or, or statement uh, that they you know that they're fixated on. And a mammoth character really talks more in a monologue. That other characters momentarily interrupt. You know, it's a big chunk of text with uh, interjections in between, but if you remove those, it is simply a character mostly talking uh, for themselves, trying to work out something in their own mind. He deals a lot with two-handers, uh, two characters uh, interacting uh, at a time, and the conversations, again, are, are keep on rotating around each other. They're abstract. They don't come to a, a complete conclusion because both characters are working through their own agenda and sort of intersecting but not really uh, coming to any conclusion together. So those are the five uh, most distinct elements of a David Mamet stage play. Uh, simple plot, without a happy ending, based on competition, with a little bit of transgression, and very distinctive, cycling, uh, repetitive dialogue. Now, if you want to see how well I do at recreating that and using that as an inspiration for a new piece, again, you can follow my Patreon. The link is in the comments. Uh, anyone uh, who follows uh, that page can have access to the uh, to the pieces. Um, I'm going to make it. Uh, all tiers will have access uh, to the work in progress and to the um, to the finished pieces. Uh, the highest tier will get a, 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 a nice non-watermarked, uh, more professional looking version, uh, but everyone who uh, follows the Patreon will get to, to see uh, how well I do at the 12 different plays uh, this year. So, so if that feels interesting to you, uh, then I highly uh, recommend and would appreciate uh, your, uh, your support. And I look forward to being back on this channel to talk more craft with you very soon. Peace and all good.